Wow. <laughs> what a job. Well, thank you for watching this week's tip of the week. This week, we'd like to talk about different sources of base used in our industry. We've done a lot with the hybrid base. We've done a lot with uh, dense grade bases. We've done a lot with permeable bases. However, what I'm standing on here is a job that we did seven years ago, and this was using gator base. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about gator base, some of the advantages that we saw. This particular job here being a courtyard, totally encapsulated by the school, and there was no access. So we did this as a volunteer job, got a bunch of volunteers, hand dug the whole area that you see here that's pavers, mounded up on the edges, our topsoil for these planters, as you can see, but highly, uh, highly left unmanaged and pretty well neglected. But I think that really does uh, have a lot to say about how the gator base has held up here. We see a tremendously flat surface, super flat, uh, virtually weedless for the most part. Underneath some of the tables and stuff, you'll see some moss growing, but it has held up really well. And this was an area we went down about the four inches and we screened it off a bedding layer. We laid down the uh, gator base, laid our pavers, and then we put our edging on the edges. So I would have to say a situation like this, it had its place and it really did perform well. Every system, as we know, has pros and cons. This particular system being the gator base, we have very shallow uh, embedment as far as any kind of uh, aggressive products such as gravels and stone and whatnot, which can divert tree roots. So we're seeing here with the river birch, these have a shallower root system that travels pretty aggressively on the surface. So topsoil is not too far down below this gator base surface. And uh, I'm guessing that's what took place here. You can see about a half inch, three quarter inch rise just in this one area. But that's really the only area we're seeing on this entire uh, patio that has any kind of movement at all. Otherwise, everything has stayed really flat. All right, head into our next project. This was one gator base job. We're heading to our next. Voila. This really looks beautiful. This is seven years old, this walkway. So pretty impressive and it's held up amazing. Very cool. This was another job that we took advantage of using gator base on. It's my daughter and son-in-law's home and not sure how long they actually were gonna stay here. And instead of going through the extensive dig out and base of going down to eight or 10 inches that we normally would, we're able to skim off the three and a half to four inches, screed our bedding and we laid the gator base on here. And again, laid our exless pattern for our pavers, bordered it and then put the uh, edge restraint on the outside that we're able to nail right down through the gator base. And one thing unique about this, I've just got a pretty steep slope here, and yet we haven't seen the walkway travel down the hill. So it's held up really well. The um, polymeric sand is held up really well. There's no area of failure, uh, maybe right along the driveway or a vehicle would drive and uh, coming down the hill and coming in this way, maybe a tire would get on that. So maybe break that bond a little bit. But otherwise, there's not a single um, spot on this walkway where the polymeric sand has failed. So this has been, again, another opportunity for Gator Base that worked really well in this situation. We have contractors that do jobs at colleges where they don't want to go and they don't want to dig because of all the underground utilities and whatnot. That's another area where I've heard contractors using Gator Base a tremendous amount so that they don't have to go in and do a full dig out and uh, disturb all that ground. Contractors have asked, how do you fasten your edging to the gator base? And we're gonna show you just how that can be done. So when installing the hybrid edging down onto gator base, this normally would be your 6.6 .6 feet, linear feet. So you're just gonna slide it on here and use your imagination. I've obviously got this set on a pallet, cantilevered over so you can be able to see what goes on under the ground. But two options, one being using your standard 10 inch landscape spike and you can just simply go in here on this angle. Obviously, normally this would uh, be on to down into your base. So you've got that option. I would skip two holes generally, pull it nice and tight again.
and that fastens really well because of the angle you're stitching it that's going to prevent that uplift of our edging and keep this nice and sound and prevent the pavers from laterally shifting another option for fastening our hybrid edging down onto our gator base is using a drive wall type fastener i'm simply going to drive it down through any one of the bolt holes here you drive this down through nice and tight then taking a screw gun i'm simply just going to tighten this up That fastens it extremely tight, and I don't have to worry about that laterally shifting or creeping. Lots of different options for base material. Gator base is just one of them. Has its pros, has its cons. I think it's something to consider for certain applications. So again, thank you for watching this week's tip of the week. You can always go on our website, pavetool.com, sign up for our tip of the week. You can also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you again for watching.